What's up YouTube? It's Christine with Gage Girl Training, an online meal planning and coaching service. It is Vlogmas Day 13 and today I'm bringing you guys a nutrition science Q&A. So let's get started. Like, I really wanted to give you guys, you know, Christmassy stuff, but it's just, I'm not like a lifestyle vlogger. My stuff's very like educational. I said, you know what, I'm gonna put this hat on. Hopefully that's Christmassy enough for you guys. I wanted to give you guys some more substantial content of things that you can use and questions that get answered. So if you are not already following me on Instagram, follow me at Gage Girl Training, where once a week I post a post saying I'm gonna do a YouTube Q&A and in the comments you can post your question and I will get to it. First question is by Rose Warren. How can I mentally push through weeks where my body measurements decrease, but my weight stays the same? I don't feel accomplished when my weight does not go down. How can I change my mindset? This is a huge thing, <laughs> huge thing. You have to remember, the scale does not dictate your body composition. You could be getting lighter on the scale, but not looking any different. Does that make sense? When you lose weight, you could be losing water. You could be losing muscle. It does not, weight loss does not equal fat loss. And if it's tripping you up, stop weighing yourself. Absolutely just stop weighing yourself. Focus on the measurements because the measurements is your size. When your measurements go down, you look different. Who cares what you weigh? If you feel good and look good, that's all that matters. So. If it's really tripping you up, I just suggest stop weighing yourself altogether. Next question is, no matter how much I eat, if I don't have some sort of starchy carb, I always feel hungry. How to deal with that? The answer is, you are not supposed to completely and utterly avoid carbs to reach your goals. It's okay to have carbs. It's okay to have starchy carbs. It's just not recommended to have an excess of starchy carbohydrates above and beyond the energy expenditure that you need and that you're going to end up burning. It, you need carbohydrates to function. You, your body needs glycogen and if you are dipping too low in carbohydrates, your body is screaming and telling you, hey, what's up, hello, I need some energy because the role of carbohydrates is very specific to the diet and if you need more information, please watch my video all about carbs where I explain the importance of carbohydrates and the benefits of insulin building lean muscle. Don't just arbitrarily avoid carbs because carbs are not bad. They have a specific role and there are specific parameters for which you should use them. Next question is from KM Low. What is the main thing I can do to drop weight and transform my legs? Tracking macros, I always fall off trying to log things. If you fall off trying to log things, I suggest meal planning. All you need to do is plan your, your foods in advance for the week or maybe once or twice a week. And you don't need to be thinking about the portions. You don't need to be thinking about the numbers because for myself personally, while I do enjoy the flexibility of being able to switch things out in my meal plan, I too do not like having to be like tracking all the time. I do rely on tracking from time to time, don't get me wrong, just to make sure I'm in check. But if you meal plan and plan ahead, you don't have to think. You just need to eat. <laughs> and another thing is, if you feel like you need some variety, just practice using substitutions. I think that people are afraid to exercise substituting things out. And once you become familiar with some basic substitutions, knowing you know, approximately how much sweet potatoes you could sub out for some rice or how much chicken for some steak, things like that, your life can become a lot easier. You don't need to stress, but I do agree that the mental thought of tracking and logging every single food can be tedious for some. Others like it, but for me personally, I would rather just have my meals prepped. And it doesn't mean you're living out of Tupperware, but I would at least have food cooked. I would know what portions I already need to be eating and then just take it from there. So this question is 
Hi, I saw on one of your videos that there are supplements you can take for booty gains along with proper training and nutrition. I was wondering what some of those supplements might be. Great question. First supplement I recommend for females. Now, it depends if you want lean booty gains or if you just want to bulk. If you are just straight up trying to bulk, I suggest creatine monohydrate. If you want a lean bulk where your glutes can get bigger but your the rest of your body will stay lean, I suggest creatine ethyl ester. The difference is the creatine monohydrate. The monohydrate binds water inside of your muscle. It's going to make your muscles appear bigger, but that can have a bloating effect. It doesn't really seem to be too big of a problem for men who are trying to, to bulk up, but however, creatine, once you come off of it, it is very, very, very effective at building muscle. That's number one. I definitely recommend creatine. Creatine ethyl ester over monohydrate because the ethyl ester, uh, chemically, if I drew out the structure for you, that doesn't bind water inside of the muscle, but you do get the muscle building effect. So that's number one. Number two, you want to be supplementing with at least two to three grams of beta alanine prior to your HIIT cardio workouts. In a white paper study, I, it has been stated that supplementing with beta alanine two to three grams prior to HIIT cardio within a month's time can help build up to two to three pounds of muscle per month if you are consistently supplementing that before your HIIT cardio. So it's a really great way to add muscle. So those are my two main recommendations. There are a lot of other ways we can do, but we can discuss that in more depth and detail in a glute specific supplementation video. How do you feel about adding MCT oil to your diet and how much do you recommend to take in a day if you were trying to lose weight? Or does it all come down to fitting it in your macros and your thoughts on the eat fat, get thin theory? Thank you. So my whole thing on the MCT oil, I think that it, there's been a lot of marketing buzz around it. However, it's a fat, it's a medium chain triglyceride. All that means is that if you could imagine something like butter, which is a solid at room temperature versus olive oil, which is a liquid at room temperature, MCTs are in the middle. So they are going to be a little bit easier to break apart than butter. They're gonna be a little bit harder to break down compared to olive oil. Do I recommend it? Mm, fat is fat, however, I would prefer an unsaturated fat just due to the fact that there are more carbon-carbon double bonds allowing them to break freely and you have the free radical so that way it can be broken apart and digested more easily and more readily. My recommendation is to go for a little lighter fats such as things like olive oil. This next person says, I never feel full and I want to be at least full for a couple of hours. How do I do that? Depends on what you're eating. And it depends on your hydration level. If you never, ever, ever, ever feel full, number one, you want to make sure you're drinking a gallon of water a day. Number two, if you're already doing that, you want to make sure that you're eating meals high in lean protein as well as high in vegetables, which are going to have a lot of fiber. They're going to fill up a higher volume in your stomach as opposed to dent things like like potato chips or things like that, which are not going to take up a lot of volume in your stomach, but they are very calor calorically dense, but volume-wise they're not very dense. Um, the other thing is you may want to switch over to higher volume carbohydrates. I just did a video explaining the difference that if you wanted to have some pasta, I had a visual showing one ounce of linguine, which is 25 grams of carbs, compared to 12 ounces of spaghetti squash, which is, the same amount of carbohydrates, but you get to have 12x the volume of food. So you really want to look into some carbohydrate substitutions and don't be afraid to make substitutions. Some people get so scared. They're like, is this really equivalent? Like, yeah, it is equivalent. So exercise those options. And if you're not sure, check out my, my book on that, this or that. It's a excellent macronutrient substitution guide. It is the most comprehensive thing that you'll ever find on the internet. And you can find that on gagegirltraining.com. Next question is, how do you recommend someone who's never competed start? What would you recommend as the first and most important step? Thank you. So I think the first step, if you're trying to compete, the first thing you need to know is your body fat percentage. You need to have a gauge of where you're at and 
if you're not sure, I suggest having that professionally measured. In order for a female to show visible abs, like a full-blown six-pack, you need to be at least under 13, 14%, depending on how your body stores fat. So if you are upwards of 20, 30%, you need to, number one, figure out what your body fat percentage is, number one, and then number two, figure out how long it is going to take you to at least get to the point where you can see your abs, because that amount of time that it's going to take you to get ready is going to vary person to person. And if you have a significant amount of body fat to lose, you may need to give yourself more time. For some, some people prep for six months, some prep for 20 weeks, 12 weeks. I don't recommend prepping less than 12 weeks unless you're already very fit. However, you definitely want to know where you're at body fat percentage wise. You want to know approximately how long it's going to take you to get competitor lean and most competitors are even leaner than 13 14% body fat even for bikini some sometimes I know when I competed I was around 10% and maybe even like high nines because I got my, my body fat measured so you just want to make sure that your body fat is lean enough and that you're giving yourself adequate time to be ready so that's all I have time for right now there were a lot of excellent questions and some of them were so good that I'm going to film complete separate videos on them but i just want to thank you guys for watching thank you for being loyal to me throughout this whole vlogmas series it's really taken a lot out of me but i love you guys and i'm gonna rock out the rest of this month with lots of great content so please comment below any other videos that you'd like to see this month and i'll do my best to film them for you so take care and i'll see you in the next one